spot in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stopped at the east bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. Crate, wonder what's in it. To Jeff Taggart, Langtree, Texas. Well, that's something Jeff's ordered. <laughs> Enough wood in that crate to build a good sized shed. Yeah. Want me to help you lock it in the store? Oh, you won't have to do it alone. I'll get you some help. Hey, boys, come over here and give us a hand, will you? Belongs to Jeff. Why don't we get him to help us? Well, he's not around. He went off somewhere with Letty. Here, boys. Say, Judge, you can marry people, can't you? That's right. See what's in this crate. You figured on getting married, Adam? Well, yes, Judge, I am. But I wish you wouldn't say anything about it, at least not for the moment. It couldn't be a plow. Might be a harrow. Could be a disker. Why, is the girl's family giving you trouble? Yeah, her father. He doesn't like me. Don't worry about it, son. Everything always turns out for the best. Hello, Jeff. Letty. Hello, Adam. Looks a little crowded, Judge. The customers need a shoehorn to get in here. Hey, but now, no remarks. It just happens that all this belongs to you. You wouldn't want to make a little bet on that, would you? Hey, what's going on here? You two been up to something? Well, we planned a little surprise for your birthday, Uncle Roy. But something went wrong and. Birthday? I got it is my birthday. Got all about it. Best wishes, Judge. From me, too, Uncle Roy. Your present is in this crate. I'll bet you can't guess what it is. Well, all I know is it's heavy. Took five of us to bring it in here. It's a new buggy, Uncle Roy. We drove over the railhead to bring it back. We didn't know it was going to come in a crate. A new buggy. We're going to get Dan, the wagon maker, over here to put it together for you, Uncle Roy. Wagon maker? What do I want a wagon maker for? I can put it together myself. Oh, now, Uncle Roy. Quite a job, Judge. What are you talking about? Well, I've been around buggies all my life. But you've never put one together right from the beginning, Uncle Roy. I think maybe we'd better have Dan over here to help you. What do you think, Jeff? I think you're right, Letty. And spend all that money? Why, well, I can put that together myself in just a matter of hours. <laughs> it's so late, Uncle Roy. Aren't you ever going to go to bed? 
Now, you run on to bed, child. I want to work on this rig a little longer. You've got the seat on backwards, Uncle Roy. On backwards? Of course it's not on backwards. Looks backwards to me. Well, by golly, it is on backwards. You know something? They left a couple of parts out on this thing. Most of the bolts and nuts are not here. Look at you, you're all worn out. I'd have had this thing put together a long time ago if they sent those bolts and nuts. They may still be over at the railhead. Where's Jeff? He left at 8 o'clock last night. Oh, ran out on me, huh? Well, I better go get him myself. <laughs> Mr. Bender, it's that Adam kid. My cop! Get him! All right, pull up, pull up! Hey. What do you want, Bender? You're on your way to the ranch to see my daughter, aren't you? Yes. I thought I told you to stay away from my daughter. Any law against seeing her? You see that, Mr. Bender? Just like I was telling you. He's a real smart boy. Won't listen to nobody. Stay out of this, Beeman. Between Bender and me. Mr. Bender, why don't you want me to see your daughter? Because you come from no good trash, and I'd see my daughter dead before I'd let her marry you. I figure I got my freight business going. I figure I'm just as good as you are. Oh, you do, do you? Well, I ran your sod-busted nest of a father off my land. I see I'm gonna have to run you off, too. All right, Beeman, get him out of there. You mean it, boss? Of course I do. Don't do it, Beeman. Well, that'll teach you to stay away from my daughter. Yeah, I think maybe it will, Mr. Bender. At least it'll cool him off for a while. All right, let's get back to the ranch. I saw you from the house. I saw what they did to you. It's all right. It's not all right. Dad was brutal. Oh, Adam, why don't we get married today? Now. Now? Today? Yes. We can go into Langtree and get Judge Bean to marry us. What about your father? I don't care what my father thinks. All right, honey. Let's do it. We'll have to do it fast. Your father finds the gun. It's all right. We'll make it. <laughs> My goodness, it's been a month of Sundays, hasn't it? Yes, it has, Letty. Is the judge here? Oh, no, he rode over to the railroad camp. Oh, Adam, the judge isn't here. Came in to get married, Miss Bean. We've got to do it real fast. Married? Oh, that's wonderful. It won't be so wonderful if Sharon's father gets here before the judge. I told you not to see this fellow, didn't I? I'm going to marry him. Can't you see that he's just a worthless no good? All he wants to do is marry you for what he can get out of it. That's a lie. Are you calling me a liar? Take it easy, Mr. Bender. You're coming home with me right now. I'm not. I'm going to marry Adam. 
He's good and kind. He'll give me some happiness, which is more than you ever did. You shouldn't talk to your Paul like that, Miss Sharon. You keep out of this, Beeman. I'm old enough to marry if I want to. And you can't stop me. Well, we'll see about that. Where's the judge? I want to talk to him. He's not here right now. Won't do you any good to threaten Judge Bean. He's not afraid of you. Neither am I anymore. There's somewhere I can stay till the judge gets back, Letty. Of course, Sharon. You can stay with me. I promise you. You'll never marry my daughter. Sharon, what are you doing in town? She came in town to get married, Uncle Roy. Married? Well, now, that is good news. Come on inside and we'll talk it over while I work on my buggy. I sure am glad to see you, Judge. Oh, Adam. Is he the groom? Yes, Judge. What your father say about this? I've got a lot to say about it, Beam. She's my daughter and I say you can't marry her. She's not old enough. Well, now, Adam, here's a good, hard-working boy. He'd make a fine husband. She isn't old enough to get married. Why, that's not true. I'm 18, and that's old enough for a girl to get married without her father's consent. Isn't it, Judge? That's right, Sharon. When I say she's not 18, you can't marry her without my consent. But you're not telling the truth, Father. <laughs> now, we'll have no more of that, you understand? She's my daughter. That's right. She's also a young lady and should be treated as such. All right, all right. But I still say you can't marry her. I am 18. You know I'm 18. Now, Sharon, Sharon I just can't remember. You, you kids grow up so fast. Have you got proof? Proof? Well, Judge, can't you see what Pa's doing? He doesn't want me to get married, so he's willing to lie about my age. Now, Sharon, if you'll show me proof that you're 18, I'll marry you in spite of your father. But you must show me proof. <laughs> If I could kill you for this, you hear? I could kill you. You're being pretty hard about this, Mr. Bender. This happens to be none of your business, Bean. Isn't it a shame, Uncle Roy? They wanted to get married so badly. Well, give it a little time. I've always noticed that when two people really want to get hits, they manage to bring it about some way. Oh, say, they had the bolts over at the railhead, all right. Just forgot to send them. I'm going to get busy and get this buggy finished in a hurry. Then what are you going to do with it? Going riding in it. What else? <laughs> Wear it through the door. I'd like to be around when you try that. It won't go through the doorway, Uncle Roy. Of course, uh, you might make a big hole in the wall. Or enlarge the doorway. All right, go ahead and have your fun. Why didn't you tell me this before I had the dang thing put together? I didn't know you were going to put it together in here. I thought you were just fooling around with it. Fooling around? I spent all night long working on this thing. You could have told me, lady. I'm sorry, Uncle Roy. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> I've made a lot of fool mistakes in my time, but this beats them all. <laughs> Adam's gonna find a way to beat this. You know that, don't you, Mr. Bender? How? You'll prove the Sharon's 18 some way. All right, then suppose you think of some way of getting rid of it. I know of a way. No gunplay. We'd never get away with it, not with Bean. No, no gunplay. But suppose Adam happened to shoot you. Shoot me? What are you talking about, Bean? We all heard what he said down in the store. He'd like to kill you. Suppose you lay low for a while. I'll go to Bean with the proof that you've been shot. And with the proof, it wouldn't be hard to lay it on to Adam. No, I, I guess it wouldn't if you had the proof. All right, I'm with you.
Hey, where have you been taking these parts? Across over the livery stable. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so, but don't lose any of these nuts or bolts. I never will get this thing put back together. Yeah, what's up, Eamon? Take a look at this, Judge Bean. What about it? Well, it belongs to Dan Bender. We rode out of town about three hours ago to look for some strays. We split up at Bascom's Rock, and I rode south, and Dan rode into the hills. When I come back to meet him, he wasn't there. So I begin to wonder about him. I rode into the hills to take a look for him, and this is what I found. We all heard Adam say he wanted to kill Bender right here in the store. Didn't you? Yeah, we heard it. This is no proof that Adam killed Bender. You seen Adam around, Jeff? Yeah, he wrote a little while ago. I think he's been talking to Sharon and Letty. I want him held for murder, Judge. Now listen, Beeman. I agree it looks bad for him, but this is no positive proof. Jeff, you better bring Adam in. I want to talk to him. Adam, Judge wants to see you. Adam, I want to talk to you, you and Sharon. Sure, Judge. Sharon, honey, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Your father's been shot. Oh. Maybe killed. Oh, Adam. Do you know anything about it, Adam? Me? How could I know anything? Well, everybody heard you threaten Bender right here in the store. That's right, they did. When I walked into Letty's room just now, I heard Adam say he'd been over Bender's house, looking for proof of Sharon's age and the family Bible. What are you talking about? How does this concern me? Mr. Beeman's got some pretty convincing evidence against you. I'm going to have to hold you until I straighten this thing out. Jeff? It's a mistake, Sharon. Oh, I sorry, didn't do Adam, it. Let's go. I didn't do it. Better come on, Adam. I'm sorry, Sharon. <laughs> it's been a terrible mistake. It's all my fault. It happened because of me being 18. Oh, please, someone take me home. I'll take you home, honey. Take the upper lady. Come on, Sharon. <laughs> Something mighty important. Come on with me. Do you see what I see? Yeah, I've been watching them for quite a while. You know what they're trying to do, don't you? Yeah. Some of them have been drinking, too. Suppose they take Adam. Then they gotta take me, too. some rest and you'll feel better. There's no positive proof that your father's really dead. Thank you, Judge. Isn't this your father's? Yes. Have you ever known him to go anywhere without it? No. Well, we're going back to Langtree. Why? Because I don't think your father's dead.
got a new rope here that needs stretching. Let's go with that and get him and string him up. Get out of the way, deputy, before you get hurt. Don't try to take him, Beeman. You are your man. Adam gets a fair trial. See, men, what did I tell you? A fair trial, he says. That means that some slick lawyer will get him off. Listen, you man. You're letting Beeman talk you into a lynching. You're going to keep pushing this thing until you regret it. Each and every one of you. We're taking Adam. It's no good, Beeman. Don't you try it. I'm warning you for the last time. Come on, man. Don't let him bluff you. I got a 45 slug for the first man that tries to take my prisoner. That goes special for you, Beeman. Do as I say and stay away from the jail. Yeah, we'll go away, but not without Adam. We're going to string him up. There's been no murder. Dan Bender's very much alive. The rest of you disperse or I'll prosecute every one of you. You gave me a real bad time, Bender. That makes up for some of it. Now, as soon as he comes to it, I want you to lock him up. Then I want you to go out and bring Bender in. You'll find him out at his ranch. You tell him he's charged with conspiracy. I'll think up a couple other counts before you get back. I now pronounce you man and wife. buggy breaks down before they get to Carson Bend. What do you mean? That's my new rig they borrowed. I put it together myself. That's what I was thinking of. I'll bet you three to one they don't get to Carson Bend. <laughs> Why, you young pup. I know. 
must go to the land of the Pecos, there to stand. 